But the ESMO meeting, uh, one of the data sets that we're all eagerly anticipating was the Crown clinical trial data. Uh, there are now several ALK inhibitors uh, which are uh, either uh, in development or being used, and one of these is lorlatinib. Uh, it's already licensed to be used either after a next-generation inhibitor or crizotinib. And the key issue is, should this be used up front? And this was uh, the question that was being uh, answered by the Crown uh, trial. Uh, this uh, trial was an international randomized phase three trial of frontline metastatic help positive uh, lung cancer patients who were randomized to receive either crizotinib or um, law latinib with the primary endpoint of uh, progression free survival by blinded independent central review. Now, we've all been waiting a long time for this data because many of us have been using lorlatinib in the relapse setting where we find it a highly effective drug. And the key issue is uh, how much better than crizotinib would it be? We all expect it to be better than crizotinib. And what would the comparative efficacy of lorlatinib be against what we've already seen with brigatinib in the ALTA1L trial and alexinib in the ALEX study? The primary endpoint that was reported from the uh, Crown uh, trial was progression-free survival by blinded independent review with a hazard ratio of 0.28, which is a really very uh, uh, strongly positive trial. The median um, survival for the crizotinib arm was 9.3 months, and it wasn't reached for the um, lorlatinib arm. Now, some might say that the crizotinib arm underperformed, uh, given that we've seen around 10 to 11 months in the brigatinib and lectinib studies. Um, but I, you know, personally, I can see no particular reason for that because both brigatinib and crizotinib arms were well balanced. Patients couldn't have had prior chemotherapy going into this study, unlike the ALTA1L study. And around 25% of patients had CNS metastases going into the study, which is very similar to ALTA1L at 25 percent and uh, much less than the lectinib uh, trial of uh, the Alex trial of lectinib uh, at around 40 uh, 45 percent other uh, interesting uh, secondary endpoints included uh, intracranial response uh, we know that uh, uh, lorlatinib is a highly effective intracranial disease, and those with measurable intracranial uh, brain metastases, lorlatinib had a response of around 82%, uh, which is highly active. And I would say that compares very favorably to what we've already seen with ALTA1L, with a measurable disease intracranial response rate of about 78%. Uh, many of uh, the outpatients that we see have CNS metastases, and the key issue is what's the efficacy of these drugs in patients with CNS disease at baseline? Uh, Crown reported a uh, overall uh, progression-free survival in patients with CNS disease with a hazard ratio of 0.2, uh, which is really very effective, and in those without CNS disease, a hazard ratio of 0.3. So just putting that in context, in ALTA1L, uh, the hazard ratio for brigatinib versus crizotinib for patients with CNS disease was 0.25, very similar to the 0.2 that we see with lorlatinib. Uh, but for patients without CNS disease was uh, 0.65, similar for uh, uh, electinib, whereas what we're seeing with lorlatinib is 0.32. Uh, so for patients without extracranial disease, this looks like a very active drug, and it also looks very effective uh, for patients with intracranial disease. Um, but I would also suggest brigatinib has uh, a role here as well, given the intracranial data in ALTA1L. The one thing that we need to be mindful of is the rather unusual toxicity profile that uh, lorlatinib has. It has a number of uh, adver adverse event types uh, that it can cause, such as hypercholesterolemia, peripheral neuropathy, uh, peripheral edema, but more importantly, neurocognitive effects. And in uh, the uh, trial, a total of around 20% 20, 20 of treatment-related neurocognitive adverse events uh, were reported. So overall, in summary, this is a strongly positive uh, trial uh, against crizotinib, and definitely lorlatinib is a treatment uh, uh, option for patients with upfront disease. Uh, it's very hard to make cross-trial comparisons between electinib, brigatinib, lorlatinib, and of course, we also have um, ensartinib, uh, 
uh, with the XALT3 trial recently reported. Um, the populations in the trials were very subtly slightly different and the endpoints were, were, were very different as well. Um, but undoubtedly, lorlatinib represents a uh, treatment option. I guess one of the things that oncologists are all thinking about is the unusual neurocognitive adverse events that we see with uh, lorlatinib. And in practice, one would have to balance those uh, against the efficacy uh, that we've seen.